50 Cent, hello. How you doing? I'm doing good, how you doing? I'm enjoying myself, I'm out in London. Yeah, we both got a matching beanies on today because it's freezing. Yeah, it was raining earlier. Yeah? You like the UK? I do. This is the home away from home. It's a little New York City right here. London is definitely like that spot that feels like New York that was cooler for me because it wasn't as overwhelming as New York was for me. New single, My Life. Absolutely love it. Tell us a little bit about it. My Life is a song that I recorded almost two years ago. I've had an opportunity to work really hard on this actual album I'm getting ready to put out. So I've recorded 70 songs for it, and I have to cut it down to 14, you know, so the process is weeding it out to tell the right story and the sequencing of the actual music. It's, I mean, it's a fun process after you actually have the creative part done and you're just really putting it together to make it feel right, to tell the right, to convey the right energy. And how do you go about picking collaborations for this record? Well, on a song-by-song -song basis, I... I because I like to write the entire record. I don't know what the song is if I don't write the chorus. Twice in my career, I've had to change the records. They were both with Neil, because he's a strong writer. He doesn't like to say anything that he didn't come up with. But I like you're supposed to know not to fix the hit when you hear a hit playing. You're supposed to leave it and just let it be a hit. And then if he'll change it, you know, it's a new way. But it worked, both, both uh, the Baby By Me record and... There's a new uh, collaboration that we did together that I may use for this actual album. So. And how do you kind of approach things now with all the stuff that you know and all the experience that you have and, you know, kind of being at the top of your game for so long, how differently do you approach making an album now as opposed to, like, the first time around? I mean, it's, it's fun. Music is fun. The process is uh, you're supposed to enjoy it, you know, like, and when you lose the ability to be a fan, you should stop making it. You know, because the competitive nature of it makes you compete. Sometimes you can hear people that you're in competition with and you just tone deaf. Like, you can't hear why people are listening to it. You just, because you don't like the person. But um, you got to listen closer to, to figure out why it's actually playing or what that thing is that's working. So you can actually have your finger on the pulse of what's going on so you make the right decisions musically. And how much do you think the game has changed since you first? Oh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. For game, better or for worse? I, well, it depends on who you ask. See, the guy who just fell in love with the culture is going to say this is what it is right now because he doesn't know what I'm talking about. And when I was watching it and just a fan of it, authenticity meant so much. And now it's a trend. It's a whole bunch of... It's a lot of artists following each other, you know, in style and the fashion fads and stuff, all these things end up right in the music video for you to see it. It's like if you can spin the globe, you can go places where no one speaks English at all and you'll know, understand who's into hip-hop culture by things that, within dress code, you'll see things that you you know what it is. And Whether you can understand every word that comes out of their mouth, you can tell if he's actually a rap artist or a different kind of artist. And, it's cool. I just I just watch. A lot of people don't offer themselves, so there's no big separation between them and anything else. And what do you think the key to longevity is? Being prepared to make adjustments. You know, because some, some people just stay in that box that they're in and, and they just they won't do anything different. They don't just stay in that one space, you know, because a lot of the material that I created initially that resonated the strongest at was aggressive content. The aggression translated the strongest, and I wrote all the dysfunctional behaviors in the environment that I grew up in, so I had a, a darker aura. Now when, when you approach the music, like, they kind of didn't like when I did things that were, like, sexy or, or that it was, like, sexual because they wanted me to kill somebody or to be more like their perception of me than I was, like, like I'm writing what's coming to me creatively at that point, but they want the 
portion of my presentation that they liked at that point. And that only. Yeah. We all like a bit of sexy from time to time. <laughs> I think all of us. I think we all do, right? <laughs> What's been your career highlight? You must have one that kind of really stands out that you think, wow. Well, it's the first week. First week sales on Get Rich or Die Trying. I never, you can never, you never get a second shot at a first impression. And when your first record is the largest debuting hip hop album, it, it positions you to be something to the culture, regardless if you're active or not. Just there, they'll, until someone tops it, is what it is. You know? I have to say, you're one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter. Um, <laughs> you're always saying just stuff that you don't expect an artist of your kind of stature to say. Right. Um, why do you still just throw stuff out there? Well, I just think an entertainer's job is to entertain. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes I say things for shock value and then I'll put a tweet up following it that said, said an entertainer's job is to entertain. Are you entertained? I always notice, though, that um, whenever you say stuff, you actively have stuff happening at the same time. You never just say it because you're kind of dying out. You actually have everything popping off at the same time. Yeah, I don't need to create the hoopla for... Like, look, every time I've had a a verbal altercation or a competition with another artist, those, those songs or those situations create barbershop and beauty salon conversations. The real hit records secure you being in a good space. So when there's piggy bank, there's also candy shop and just a little bit and disco inferno. And when there's back down on Gary to die trying, there's in the club and P I and P and Twenty One Questions like Mini Man and with a gangster and a whole bunch of hit records on that one. So now this actual project, I'm not even getting uh, exciting challenges. It's, it's from artists that have a song, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. The probability of an artist, so many one-hit wonders within our culture that probably will never hear another record from him that ever makes it to the slot that one song he had made to him. Again, and you, you know, so I can't keep responding to that. Are you talking about anyone in particular, 50? Well, I'm talking about the artist that made one song. You know, that like when you get challenged by an artist, a, a brand new artist, and that when they're premature, they come too early into trying to be competitive or in competition because they have a song. And they've got a few ranks to go through first, right? Oh, well, a lot more. Like, I, could, <laughs> I could perform three hours of material. I could do an hour without performing a record that isn't a commercial hit single. Mm-hmm. Or I could do about I could do forty minutes of a show of records that all made it to number one positions. I've got a present for you. I like presents. I hope that you like this present. Oh man, what is it? I know that you like chains. I actually um, saw you perhaps wearing someone else's while bowling, so I thought that I'd give you this. Wow, this is some new kind of. Yeah. This is bigger than usual, I think. Well, I thought if we were going to do it, hey. we'd do it big, 50, right? It's back to the old school nameplates with spikes like this Louboutin. <laughs> do you like what what message I had put on there for you? Hero. <laughs> what people think about you if you just walk around with this without them knowing that you gave me this as a gift? And they think this is what I think of myself. I am a hero. <laughs> it perhaps won't be as controversial as the chain you were wearing while bowling, but, you know, it might get you a bit of attention. People make mistakes. Yeah, and then they pay for it. Before we um, leave things, is there any message, 50, the hero, that you would like to give to your UK fans? I'm excited. You know, I'm ready for Street King Immortal. You know, this is my recovery album. This is the the project that I repositioned myself as, you know, like one of the leads, if not the lead, artists in hip-hop culture. Thank you so much for coming and having a chat with me. I I appreciate it. And then you brought me this beautiful chain and nameplate. (laughs) That means don't forget me. Come back and see me next time. I'm not going to forget you. 